So a lot of times when, um, you know, a lot of times you, you hear people praising the Lord because uh, something has happened in their life and they're wise enough to recognize it wasn't of their own might or it wasn't of their own competence, but it actually was because the Almighty showed some grace on us. Um, I want to give you a scripture. Uh, we'll just start, uh, Psalm 22. We'll go to Psalms 22, uh, verse 3. It says, But thou art holy, O thou that inhabiteth the praises of Israel. So a lot of times you hear people say God inhabits the praises of his people. Israel is called his people. That's where I came from. But that's the scripture they're referencing. It actually says God inhabits Israel's praises. So as the praise goes up, God is uh, manifesting themselves in that uh in that particular era, in that particular environment of praise. Uh, and praise, uh, and one of the words, uh, one of the Hebrew words used for praise is halal. Uh, so interesting, uh, a, lot of, a lot of, if you study how a lot of different uh, religions, a lot of them have derived what they do from the Bible and then they just create their own religion. Because uh, growing up in the, uh, North New Jersey, the nation of Islam was pretty prevalent. Um, just a particular sect. It's not necessarily recognizing Muslim countries, but everything was halal. People didn't even, I don't know if people even knew what that really meant, but halal means to praise. It's uh, to shine, uh, to make a show, to boast, to celebrate. Halal, uh, to shine, to make a show, to boast, and to celebrate. And just for our particular purposes today, we're going to talk about three different types of praise, three different types of praise. Uh, and I hit an angle of this when I talked to, when I talked about uh, uh, what's in the mix, and I was talking about music and some of the different things uh, that we may take for granted in music. But uh, you have the praise of man towards man. You have the one type of praise is the praise of man towards man. A a uh, a uh, hard, a vertical exchange, no, I'm sorry, a horizontal exchange uh, with man towards man. And although it's often beneficial, this scripture that talks about uh, the praise of man, uh, well, I'll give you scriptures just for the sake of time. 1 Corinthians 11, 2, 1 Peter 2, 14. It talks about this man being praised. And, you know, even Paul talked about, he says, he says, uh, uh, he, in 1 Corinthians 11, he talks about just how he was so encouraged that people really appreciated him. So, pray, you know, praise towards man is not necessarily always a bad thing because it's showing a level of appreciation. And we'll get into another scripture that will explain how we're supposed to handle that. Even though it's beneficial to us, it can be a snare to us because a lot of times man can't handle praise. Uh, actually, man is not really designed to handle praise. You know, uh, a lot of times when praise comes to you, you're supposed to defer it to God. Mm -hmm. You know, someone's trying to, to to praise you. You're making sure you give your honor, your your glory and honor to God because you understand that it wasn't of your competency. It's not of your might and your power. If it wasn't for the abilities God gave you, uh, you wouldn't even be getting that level of praise. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes uh, we're tested by praise. Praise actually tests. Uh, are we going to still honor God when we pray? If you think about the history of man, normally when someone is praised is when they're most challenged. You know, you know, the climbing up the ladder where you're you're seemingly insignificant is not as difficult as when you reach the top of that ladder and you're deemed as significant, that's when the test really starts. But a lot of times, that's when people mostly relax. You know, once they get praised and everybody's pumping them up. You know, because the, you know, a lot of times, uh, uh, in, in uh, Matthew chapter six, and verses one through five, a lot of times people are seeking the praise of men. I'm gonna give you that, then we'll go to Proverbs 20, 27. 
uh, Matthew 6. It says, take heed that you do uh, not your alms before men. Uh, you know, alms is another offering. One through tithes and offers is another a level of offering. It says to be seen of them. That's why, it's, you know, the whole thing about having the, the offering box up front where everybody has to get up and come up front. Sometimes people can get into pride because they're up front. They're going to look. I'm going to give. Sometimes those people, uh, they're putting empty envelopes in those boxes. Mm -hmm. But it's just, but the whole thing is just everybody's watching if I'm giving or not. So I want to be in the number of those people giving. So that's why we don't have a box up here. Um, or that's why we don't do the, the, yeah, it may work for other people, but we don't do it like we go aisle to aisle. Because actually, uh, that was, that set up as pressure. Because if everybody in your aisle is standing up and you're the only one sitting down, you know, you, <laughs> you'd be tempted to get up and give something. I got a court or something. So you could be end up giving out a necessity of a grudge. Mm -hmm. or, you could, or it could be a different, a subtle way of enticing you to give. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody else done got up. Oh, you just going to sit there? <laughs> oh, we should do that today. I'm playing. I'm playing. I'll just be playing. We ain't doing that. <laughs> that I'll, you see the looks on people's face. What's this? Um... But it's a subtle way of doing it. It says, take heed that you do not your alms before men uh, to be seen of men. Otherwise, it says, otherwise you have your reward. So if your goal is just to be seen, that is your reward. Now, God could have planned something else for you, especially when it talks about, he was talking about giving alms. He, he could have a harvest for that alms. But if your goal is just to be seen, you got your reward. So don't expect a reward from him. Uh, therefore, when when thou doest thine alms, uh, do not sound the trumpet before thee. It says, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may uh, have glory of men. See, so their goal is to be praised by men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when you, uh, but when thou doest alms, uh, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth. Let, they, uh, let thine alms, uh, that thy alms may be in secret, and the Father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as, uh, as the hypocrites are. For they have, uh, I'm sorry, for they love to pray standing in the synagogue and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. See, so it's all about the praise of men. You miss out on the glory and the blessings of God. And that's why it can be dangerous. Let's go to Proverbs 27. You remember King Herod comes up and uh, you know, people start saying, he speak, he speak as a God. Well, they started to worship him as a God. He took on that worship and then he was eaten up from the inside out with worms. You know, Proverbs 27 too, it says, let another man praise thee. Not with thine own mouth, a stranger, not with thine own lips. So here it's saying, you're going to get praise of men. And when and that praise should be coming from other men. Because some people, but it just ain't handled the praise appropriately. Defer that praise to God. You know, 1 Corinthians 10, we probably going to get to it anyway. You know, all things you do, you do to the glory of God. Not as unto men. So every time somebody comes to glorify you, you make sure you share with them how you were able to do what you do. You know, it was through God. Um, I think another practice would be good is when you learn things from other people, uh, express where you got it from. So that keeps you humble. You know, so you might hear me say a lot, my wife was sharing this, or I learned this from that, or I was talking to, it could, it could be Devin, it could be Ernest or something. Well, that's been a, a practice of mine since I got in ministry because you know, I figure I actually was learned it from them. And I've been in situations where the Lord made, now of course they got it from God, so they still have to give the glory to God, that's all known. But I've been in situations where the Lord has, you know, showed me something, give me a revelation, and I've shared it. Somebody else learned from it, but they shared it as if they just got it from God. So, you know, I felt a little uneasy. I mean, I wasn't mad at the, the, the person. But I felt one of the easy so, I, so it taught me, let me make sure I at least let this person know that what, 
what they got from God and their obedience to God really had an impact on them. But that would keep you humble. This particular pastor, of course, is talking about watch boasting, watch, you know, talking trash. But, you know, yeah, I did this, I did that. Let another man praise thee, not with thine own mouth, not with thine own lips. Something I practiced for years as an athlete. I asked it because I knew this scripture. Uh, you know, I should share with the youth all the time because sometimes they, they get the big head. When you drop down to verse 21, verse 21 talks about praise tests you. Praise is your test. You know, it keeps you tested. Uh, where is it? It says, uh, it says, as the finding pot for silver and as the furnace for gold, so is a man to his praise. So praise is, is, is what tries you. Oh, it's not necessarily for you to, okay, are you going to still be humble? And we'll probably get into Deuteronomy 8 scripture here when we get to uh, how, how do we praise God. And then uh, the, next, the next type of praise is God towards men. So God actually praises men. God towards men. It's the highest commendation a person can receive. Um, such as an act of praise, it reflects a true servant's heart. So, so look, look, look. So here you have God, the Almighty, will actually show appreciation and validation towards men. And of course, a well-known passage is Matthew three. Uh, Matthew three seventeen. It's right before Jesus went to the wilderness. It says, "And a voice from heaven saying, This is my Son, in whom I am well pleased.'" God was uh, praising Christ for getting to that stage, from going through the, the 30 years of being human and, and arriving at the point where he went to baptism, when he comes up that, out of that water and, meet, and, and merges with the Holy Spirit, God was praising him for that stage. He was giving him praise for that stage. And then... Uh, See, the, the thing is, I'll give you the scriptures that you study out the rest of it for yourself, just for time. But John uh, 12, 28, uh, Matthew 25, 21, uh, 1 Corinthians 4, 5, and the thing is that God's praise is not always based on you meeting that condition. So God doesn't See, a lot of times we're praising God because he met a condition. He did something for us, what he's done. But God's praise is not based on what, what we've done. God's praise is based on what he believes we're going to do. See, so Jesus hadn't even done, he had died on the cross yet, which he had came for. He had paid the price of sins, which he had came for. He hadn't done any miracles to show God's power for his glory yet, which he had came for. Jesus is just on the starting block and still God, God, so God's praising him because God sees in advance what he's capable of. So imagine that, you know, uh, you think about God the Father and how he deals with our, uh, his children. Imagine if we did that, you know, we deal with our children. Imagine if we gave them uh, praise before they did what they're supposed to do. In other words, just letting them know how much we believe in them. So God was letting Jesus know, oh, this is my son. I'm pleased. He ain't did nothing yet. But, but I know what's in him, and I believe that he's capable of doing it. So again, God's praise is not always based on you meeting the condition, what you are doing. Rather, God knows you're going to do. He believes in you. His praise is based on the fact that he believes in you. And then uh, number three is, so we got the uh, first one is man towards man. The second praise is God towards man. And of course, the third praise is man towards God. Um, it's the means by which we express our joy to the Lord and our, and our appreciation for what he's done in our lives. So we are, uh, we are to praise God both for who he is uh, and for what he does. Let's look at uh, Psalms 150. So we're, we're appreciative of who God is in our lives, but we also appreciate 